Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. It is Nightmare with Nightmare's Ride. Um, doing my best Venus fly, fly trap. You know, I do kind of watch WKRP in Cincinnati to understand. Venus sort of, fly yeah, trap. Venus fly trap. I don't think you wore that kind of <laughs> Uh, he could have. We don't know. Okay. Uh, do not change your channels. Do not adjust them. You are not experiencing technical difficulty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> welcome you to. You might uh, be. I don't know. You might be. We don't know. Yeah. Right. Uh, welcome to uh, eight o'clock Wednesday night. It is Nightmares Ride again. We are always glad to have you on board. And I am just checking on some things, trying to get some work done as we talk to you guys. As usual, and as always, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight's show is called Shake, Rattle, and Roll. Now, I'm doing my my, my best, uh, Greg. Oh, man. You are all oh, man, baby. I know I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? I'm saying that, I, I'm going to get off tangent just a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> Me and Dora went on, what the hell's with a hat deal? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell y'all a true story real quick uh, before I get too sidetracked tonight. I bought this on a cruise uh, a few years back. And uh, I come walking off the cruise, uh, just just like you see me. And the uh, the, the uh, border patrol there swore them down. I was Greg Altman. And I didn't know whether that was good, bad, or in between. I really didn't. But anyway, it's been kind of a running joke with me. Um, I am kind of dressed like this tonight because the name of the show is Shake, Rattle, and Roll. And again, a lot of people think that maybe it has something to do with uh, rock and roll. Yeah, it, so you got Shake, Rattle, and Roll, and you got Greg All oh, Man. Yeah. So what's Shake, Rattle, and Roll? Shake, Rattle, and Roll, what it is. Uh, we're going to talk about painting. These are spray cans. You have to shake them up. I don't know if the mic can get that mic. Put that up right there. Okay. They shake. Yeah. And rattle. Uh-huh. And there's a little ceramic ball bearing in the bottom. I like to roll it. That's uh -huh. just, I don't know if it does any good or not. I feel like, you know, I like this kind of shaking, not stirred thing going on. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a good martini. And shake it up and that kind of stuff. So that's how I come up with the name of the show. Shake, rattle, and roll. Isn't that like a musical reference? It is to Bill Haley and the Comets. 1954. Yeah. 1954? 1954. Bill Haley and the Comets. Wait a minute. You can barely remember my name. How do you remember that? I was three years old. I had a good memory. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But wow. uh, Mark Jones loves that. <laughs> Only Jonesy would appreciate the hat. No, okay. everybody seems to like oh, that. Oh, everybody, everybody liking the hat. Okay. Yeah. But you can't uh, see is, his eyes. Yeah, this is all leather. Um, paid quite a bit of money for it uh, on the cruise, and I wear it at times. Um, that all depends on my mood, and I'm in the mood to wear it tonight. But I will take it off here in a little bit, okay? Um, it was kind of something to uh, pick at the admins about and the viewers. And make a reference to what the night show's all about. Music, apparently. Music? No, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, we've been promising about, oh, by the way, uh, Jonesy, I found my swing arm. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your help earlier, brother, but I finally found it. But we've been promising about working on Low Budget Bill, as some of y'all know. And um, been doing that. Okay, so if you can't add what I just said and this together to figure out exactly what's going to happen, I can't, I can't help you out. I can't clue you in any more than what I already did. But I'm going to give tips on spray painting, okay, and especially spray painting motorcycle parts. Now, at a later date, I will do, we will take the camera out in the field and I will do some spray painting and, um, show what I was taught by numerous painters is a proper technique and how to do it as well as some things you know everybody says nightmare you know how did you learn to do this you know who taught you well 
it really is a school of hard knocks okay right that's what it taught me i messed up more parts of my own personal stuff than i, I can remember and uh when you make a mistake you have to stop and figure out what you did wrong or how you did it wrong and then you change it then you go back and try it again make it right to make it right sometimes the new techniques work sometimes it doesn't and you get to redo it all over again i have redone things three or four times before i finally figured out what i was doing wrong believe it or not there is a technique to spray paint there really is there's some secrets and uh, a lot of secrets people have been told and they choose not to do it and then they don't realize or understand why um their spray painting project turned out the way it did i should uh, listen carefully because i know i do it wrong oh i guarantee you that <laughs> but anyway if i haven't said it already and i need to do this real quick and you know what i'm going to do um we're going to talk about spray painting tonight um painting techniques and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome everybody to Nightmare's Ride, uh, 8 o'clock on Wednesday nights. Uh, we were here last week and we did um, uh, a recap mm -hmm. of um, the indie show mm -hmm. and we all had a lot of fun there. Um, uh, I was talking to some of the admins earlier today. We've been texting back and forth and we still all have fond memories and um, it was, it was a great show. All I can tell you is I did talk to the promoter earlier this week. It's going to happen again. The event uh, will happen. Uh, Nightmares Ride will be back for 2021. Y'all heard that more than once on the, uh, on the show when he was on here. So we're already making plans for that, already working out small problems and things we want to do bigger and better. What makes me the happiest is my family. Um, which is Nightmare's Angels are already on board. Before I go too far, is Mel in there? Mr. Mel, you leave seen there yet? I haven't seen Mel. Uh, somebody let me know uh, if you see her. I owe Melanie Lee an apology, and I'll tell. Oh no, about she is. She's oh, the very Mel. first one. Okay, Mel, I owe you an apology. Um, I'm getting sidetracked with a lot of things tonight. I know. I promised Miss Mel last week I would wear a special made Nightmare's Angel security shirt tonight. Yes. And I had planned on wearing that. The problem is, as I think, and this was would have been an accident, trust me, it would have been an accident. I think the day we tore the studio down up in Indy and was packing everything away, I think somebody may have accidentally, and I do mean accidentally because I know everybody was in the studio. I trust them all. I love them all. I think somebody accidentally picked up my shirt by accident. So if any of y'all got home and you wound up with a Nightmare's Angel Security shirt, one too many, because she made more than just one. If you wound up with one too many, it's mine. Okay, get with me. It'll be a double extra large, and we'll still have the sleeves in it. Get with me, and I will uh, give you my mailing address. Mail it to me so I can wear it on the shirt. Mail, sweetheart, that's the only reason I don't have it on. We went to everything I brought back. Everything. Suitcases, luggage. We even undid the studio and everything else. Yeah. Uh, all the boxes, the studio equipment's packed in. It's not there. It's not in the truck. It's not in uh, Jonesy's van. I don't know. It had to have been accidentally. I can't see. It had to have been accidentally picked up. Okay. I told everybody I'd take that off sooner or later. But uh, so if you did by accident pick it up, because we were all they was, we had all took a bunch of gifts for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we had. Yeah, you did. Uh, I took jam and jellies for the girls. Uh, I had uh, liquor brought to me. Uh, I had shirts brought to me. We had beads brought up and all kind of stuff. And we had, it was hot there. And this room was air conditioned. So uh, it was just us and our crew in there. And uh, we had a long counter off to the right and everybody would come in when they got hot and that's where they'd sit and drink and watch some of the drag racing and stuff like that. And uh, we had a habit of laying shirts down or, or whatever on this counter. And I, I feel like that afternoon, I had not planned on tearing down till like six or seven. Um, the program changed as the ladies know, and we tore down at four o'clock in the afternoon because all the racing was moving over to the circle track and we were sitting at the drag strip. So I surprised everybody and said, hey, we need to tear down real quick so we can get out of here. And I honestly feel like, I, in, in, in my heart of hearts, I honestly feel like in us cleaning up, and that's one thing I can say, we made a mess, 
but we cleaned up our mess. When we walked out, it looked just as good, if not better, than what it did when we walked in. And I, I feel like somebody by accident grabbed my shirt. If you got it, hey, no big deal, but send it back to me. I'll give you my address, okay? Yeah. But Miss Mail, that's the reason I don't have it on, okay? Mm -hmm. I love my shirt, I wanna wear it. I see Tony Sprinkles in there, hello Miss, uh, I don't know what to call it, Tony or Sprinkles or Brothers or Tony Brothers <laughs> or Hey You or Thanks for the Great Food or Chef, you know, you gotta, you gotta be around the race shop to understand that joke. Well, not joke, but true. Mm -hmm. I am looking for something What's and that? you should know what I'm looking for because I have to read it. Ah, okay, we're yeah. For a sponsor. We're looking for one of our sponsors, mm -hmm. and right there they are. And I'll, I, I'm not playing favorites by hitting them off at the top of the show. I'm hitting them off at the top of the show because you can see what I have to do to find them. Here they are, and that could be none other than OSI. Okay, uh, they are your premier. Um, uh, private detective agency in the Carolinas and probably all over the United States. Um, they have a great website you can go to and find them and talk to them and stuff like that. And uh, their phone number is 336-365-300. I'm, I'm sorry, 336, too many threes, 365-9009. Here's some of the things, just a short list of what they specialize in. Infidelity skip tracing, GPS tracking, child custody, personal injury, missing persons, insurance fraud, criminal defense, video surveillance, civil investigations, nanny surveillance, background checks, executive protection, divorce investigation, criminal records check, cheating spouse surveillance, covert surveillance operations, witness interviews and statements, as well as bug sweeping to identify the presence of surveillance technology. These people are up to date on all the newest fads, trends, all that kind of stuff. They got some of the top of the line equipment. Um, their people are specially trained. Uh, some of them are ex-military. Speaking of military, they do give a 10% military discount. Okay. Could you write that phone number down for me? Yeah, I'm it's three three six. You would have asked me that. Nine zero zero nine. I can remember that part of it. Uh, three three six. Oh, I got it now. <laughs> I never made it. You know. Because you went missing yeah. for two weekends in a row. I did. I did. I may have to be tracking you. And almost went missing this last weekend. Yeah. We were supposed to have went to uh, West Virginia for something. Yes. And that didn't that didn't materialize, but uh, anyway, uh, I see Ian Coran in there somewhere. Welcome, Ian. There's Andy. Hello, Andy. Yeah. There's Miss Mail. Hey, Miss Mail. I, I, I will continue to look for my shirt, sweetheart. I promise you. But we have looked everywhere and can't find it. Okay. All right. Um, again, tonight we're going to be talking about how to spray paint with rattle cans. And if you have watched this show very for very long, you know we did a, a bike, uh, a Rat Pink Fiend bike for a customer, a Batman. And um, I think I told it more than once, I actually rattle can the frame. And we won awards. Uh, and the paint job was one thing we was based on, it was judged on, and people were surprised when they found out that the frame and some of the tins had been uh, spray painted with rattle cans. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you some of the tips, techniques, and little trade secrets to, to help you out on your next paint job. Well, and, and we're uh, doing this because the low budget build is going to build, be built old school. Old school. And we're old giving school hints. Yeah, we're giving hints. We'll let the cut out the bag in a minute. But yeah, you're exactly right. We're, you know, people ask, has asked me for many, many years, how did y'all used to do it? And with a low budget build, I'm going to do this bike the way we used to do it. Now, I know I won't get texts and emails and, and PMs uh, from people saying, hey, yeah, I know you can take it to uh, and get it sandblasted or you can go do that. I know all that. Trust me, I know all that. But that's not how I've chosen to do this bike. Uh, well, and it's a low budget. It's a low budget. And if you farm it out to somebody else, you go to a sandblaster or whatever, it's going to cost you money. Mm -hmm. You know? The last time I had a, a frame just sandblasted, it was 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, and it has to go from sandblasting straight to paint. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you something about raw metal. Once you 
I have metal by any protective coating on it of any type. If you live someplace that's not too far from the ocean, within 24 hours you're gonna have, you're gonna see surface rust getting started. Mm -hmm. Then guess what you get to do? They take it right back to the sandblast. Because well, and as I recall, even the oil from your fingers handling the frame can yes. blemish the paint. Oh yeah, wanna make your painter happy? Take the sandblaster and, and pick it up in your pickup and take it over and, and, and grab the frame by your hands and take it in there. You just really made him happy because now he's going to charge you to clean that frame up. Not sandblast it, just clean that frame all over again. Okay. In fact, some of the sandblasters we use, once they sandblast it, they will actually wrap it in a protective coating. It could be bubble wrap or, or uh, freezer paper with tape on it, just anything to keep air away from it and to keep your that blame fingerprints off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But that's things we're going to talk about here in a little bit okay. when it comes to uh, to all this. And um, I'm kind of looking, I, I'm waiting for somebody to come on. Um, I made a mistake last last week. Um, I promised a company I would give them a shout out. And I got sidetracked with the show last week and I did not do it. And I'm going to make it up to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep looking for for this one person to jump well, in. Well, you can do it now and then you can do it again. Well, I might, I might very well do that, but yeah. I want to lead up to it. Okay. But so anyway, um, Without further ado, and before we get way too far off in left field, I do have to say something. You know there's a few things that excite me. I uh, do. Beer. Yes. Moonshine. Yes. Whiskey. Yes. Road trips. Yes. Uh, and the map. <laughs> God, that was so totally not expected. Oh. The hell she was expecting. I, was, I just, I just, I just I thought about. we were talking about the things that whiskey and beer led to. <laughs> hangovers? I don't look forward to hangovers. I mean, nobody looks forward to hangovers, okay? By okay. the way, I have been asked this more than once. I need to stop. Hmm. I would love to introduce my lovely co host, Miss Miriam. Oh, he does remember my name. And uh, some of y'all know this, some of you don't. This is my wife. Yes. This is my co host. Uh, we, me and you both, have received quite a few text PMs about who is that lady sitting next to you. Yeah. You never tell us who she is or what her name is sometimes. And it was kind of like I said something last week, or some, some, I don't know. Anyway, my problem is, I feel like since I know, everybody else should know, and that's not the case. Well, it's kind of like Johnny Carson and that dude. Okay. What dude? The guy that sat next to him. Ed McMahon. Oh, you do know his name too. I, I know his name. You, you are know why? so full of useless information. I am a walking encyclopedia of useless bullshit. No kidding. I can prove it. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> it's amazing what you know. Uh, yeah. You know. Or, <laughs> uh, Ian Coran, bring me to bring me to Australia, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you some useless stuff you don't want to know. Ian knows my name. Ian, Bless yeah, his heart. Yeah, Ian knows it. But uh, yeah, good day, mate. I didn't say that right. But anyway, I like to pick it Ian. I, Ian is one of our moderators. I, Ian and Terry Hudgens is moderators. And uh, Terry Hudgens just got a Harley. I heard. And I'm so happy for him. Ian, I, I'm sure you're aware of that. But uh, And he did it backwards. And yeah. He well, got the girlfriend and then got the Harley. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't thinking on that one. No, no, no. It's good. It's just normally guys get a Harley and then get a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. He had this beautiful girlfriend and then he got a beautiful Harley. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. Whiskey and beer. There you go. Boiler makers. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, we, me and you both, seriously, we, both of us, owe the viewers an apology. Well, you have been looking for the last couple of weeks for names. Uh, and we were told they were there. For some reason, we could not find them. Well, this afternoon, we made a mission, me and you both, to go hunting. For these names, and believe it or yeah. not, we found them someplace we didn't think we would we would find them. So, I'm going to let Miss Miriam, while we have a lot of live views on there, tell us how Miss Miriam can talk about you next Wednesday night. Yes. Welcome to Nightmares Ride. Well, those of you who've been watching us all along know about our map. Those of you who are brand new to us tonight or watching us in a watch party, I swear to Nightmare. What? I swear. Those of you who are watching us in a watch party may not know about the map yet, so let me tell you I'm about our delightful little map. I'm incognito. This started out, you're what? Incognito. 
You're not incognito. You don't Nobody, know. Nobody. Yeah, but see when I see the show, I know who I am now. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be one of them shows. Get ready. Okay. Tighten your girdle, Gert. It's gonna be one of them shows. <laughs> Shut up for just a minute. Right, take it away. This is our map. What we do is, if you tell us your name, city, state, or country, then we announce you the following week and give you a pin. And as you can see, we've got lots of pins on our map, and we expected it just to be the U.S. You know how many pins is on this map? No. More pins than a porcupine. I counted them all ago. I don't know how many pins a porcupine has, and that board's got more than they do. And do you have that in your category of useless information? No, how but many? I can look it up in my Funkin' Wagnall. Okay. And Funkin' Wagnall is a dictionary we used to have to use before the internet come along. Or Webster's. Or Webster's or Britannica Encyclopedia. Okay. You know. Okay, anyway. Hello, anybody. Okay. Anyway, so we have pins here, and you get a pin by t telling us your name, city, and state. Not only in the United States, folks, but we have whole countries. So currently, we have viewers in all 50 states of the United States. All of them. Plus Canada. All, all the, what are they called? Provinces? Provinces of Canada. Provinces of Canada. I mean, all of them. Russia. The United Kingdom, Norway, Ireland, Scotland, Bali, Guatemala, Colombia, Brazil, Mexico, Australia, Thailand, and South Africa. So we have viewers all around the world. And you can join and get your own pin just by informing us of your name, city, and state. Yeah. If you're watching in a watch party, go ahead and put that information in there and the admins will forward it to us so we can announce you next week. Um, and if you have questions, ask them, and they'll forward it to us, and we'll try to, yes, to watch yes, it during the show. Yes. But because they were on the road two weekends ago. Two weekends. And we didn't do our regular Wednesday night show, I was looking at the wrong thing, and so I missed a few things last week. So Before I'm making it up. Over. I'm making it up to you this week by announcing you, and you got your pins already. So we want to say welcome to John from Idaho, Kim from Wheeling, Illinois, or Indiana, Illinois, Jay from the Southern UK, Tony from Boston, Massachusetts, Mike in New Hampshire, Donald in Maryland, David in Florida, so I got another Jay in England, yeah. I don't know why I've got two, David is in Boise, Walter is in Shinston, West Virginia. Correct. Cy is in the United Kingdom. Noah in Detroit, Michigan. Renee is Motor in... Motor City. Okay. Renee oh, is Ted from Nugent. Ohio. Ted Nugent, the Motor City Madman. Mary Jo is Old. from Florida. Patty is from Michigan. Ron is from Niagara Falls. Canada. Uh-huh. And John is from England as well. We want to thank you all for watching. We hope you came back again this week yes. and that you continue to watch us. We um, we concentrate on a little stupidity, a lot of motorcycle, some music, some rallies. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out, time out. Where, where, where was that first comment directed to? I'm a lot of stupidity. I mean, <laughs> that didn't sound right either, okay? But it, <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, it's just a little stupid once in a while. Yeah. Just because that's how we are anyway. That's how we roll. <laughs> that's how we roll in this hood. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Miriam, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, every once in a while I go off tangent and I, I do interrupt and I do pick. Mm -hmm. um, but hell, that's just me. But a little bit about the map. You are <laughs> right. You did say everything. It did start out uh, when we first started that we started seeing a few people in the feed saying, hey, I'm from here and I'm from here. And we were excited by that. Me and Nightmare's Angels, we were all excited by that. Yeah. And we realized after a month, all of a sudden, we maybe didn't even know where these people were from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hence the map come about. And we were shocked. We were surprised. One of the further, one of the first states to come on board, I believe, is Washington State. Well, and we just really, love tracking it. We yeah, think it's fun. We enjoy tracking it, and um, then we set a little goal for ourselves. So let's try to see how quick 
Now, I remember I could dominate the United States. And it got to be a joke, and you you know, you, I understand to dominate, but that's just nightmare, be a nightmare. But how, how soon we could cover all 50 states. And that's the goal. That was the that goal. That was the goal. And we covered the whole United States um, way, 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 way before the first year that we were on the air. Yes. A long time. Probably, yes. we probably covered the United States in the first eight months. Yes. But in, in the meantime of all that, then we started getting these countries. Yeah. And, I mean, the first country to come on board I, was Canada. And we were excited. We thought, oh, okay, yeah, we're, we, you know, we're out of Carolinas. And, and, hey, Canada's heard it. And then we started getting the U.K. and, and some of these other countries. Yeah. And I, I promise y'all, if we can get two or three more countries on here, uh, we will get a world map and start and do away with these pins and move them over into the countries. We'll have to figure that out because on a world map that would take the whole wall or... Well, I'm going to try to find a world map about this size. No, then the pins won't fit. Well, we'll have to figure something out. But I do have to, to uh, Australia. The warning shot has been fired across your bow. You are no longer in the lead. No. I'm sorry, Ian. I love you, brother. I can't wait to come down to see you and, and hoist a few and go for some riding, but the UK now owns that title. The UK is ahead of Australia now and the most people from a country outside the United States. Yes. And yes, we've counted one across Canada and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But we gained two more UK or England, which is we found out was United was United Kingdom as well. But what we found out is kind of like you know, telling somebody I'm from the United States, well, that's kind of, eh, eh, eh. well, no, I'm from North Dakota. No, I'm from North Carolina. No, I'm from Florida. It's kind of where you're at in that country, okay? Okay. So that's kind of what's going on with that. Uh, without looking at the map. Yes. What country surprises you the most that came on board? Bali. I Bali? just love saying Bali. <laughs> I have a toss-up between two that really, really surprised me. Well, in Russia. Russia's kind of cool too. Russia surprised me. That come in, that come in on the feed one night and just blowed everybody out of the water. Mm -hmm. And Thailand, Thailand, I think besides Canada, but I'm not mistaken, Thailand was the first one we had to make a little piece of paper for, because Canada's right up here. We stick a thing. You in the might mouth. be right. You know, but if I'm not mistaken, Thailand was the very first country that, that came on board mm -hmm. that was out of uh, the continental North America. I guess is the thing to say. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know, but I like Bali. That's kind of cool. I'd like to go there someday. But I'd like to go to the UK and Thailand and Russia and I want to Australia. Would be cool and Ireland would. Be, I actually, I think they're all cool. I do too. I think we need to go to these places and say hello to people. Everybody sends us a dollar in, gives us enough diesel fuel to leave. We'll just get down the road about a mile or two and a half trying to come back. But anyway, yes. uh, somebody asked if I drank the uh, alcohol that was furnished to me at uh, Indy. And the correct answer to that is no, I have not. It, yes, it is in my trophy case. It means a lot to me. And that's where it sits and that's where it will stay. Okay? Um, Things like that just mean a lot to me. Brian, don't take that. Hello, badly. Roger. He actually has three six packs of Harley Davidson beer. Yeah. That are. I've had for years. Twenty years old. Probably twenty years old. Yeah. 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 And they're sitting on a shelf in his yeah. shop. And I, I guarantee you that beer is no good. I've known Probably people who not. I've known people who after four or five years opened it mm -hmm. and tried to drink it and it's nasty. Well, it's nasty mm -hmm. to start with. But they wrote and tried to drink it, and it's no good. But yeah, you're right. I have three six packs of Harley Davidson beer. Um, I got two or three bottles of Sturgis, Budweiser, that uh, people went to Sturgis and brought back to me. Yeah. And uh, it's sitting up there as well. Uh, we got Roger, Ryan from Louisiana. Yep. Yeah. He's and watching. We have Keith Bringle from Northeast from Louisiana. Northeast Louisiana. Yeah. We also have Roger Folly. He says he's from Rocky Mount, Virginia. We know where, right where that's at. We used to go through Rocky Mount wide open when we were going to D.C. to see our son. Yeah, I see Troy in here. And Troy. Oh, hello, Troy. Speaking of Troy, I'm glad he's here. He is the gentleman that I needed to apologize. In fact, we saw him today, and I did stop and apologize to Troy. Um, Troy owns a company called Big Head Threads, okay? 
Um, let me back back this story up a little bit. Um, me and you have owned small businesses. And several. In fact, in fact, yeah, several. And uh, we run them, sold them for a profit, moved on. And in fact, we both, you own Annalise's Unique Boutique, mm -hmm. and I, Nightmare's Ride, as well as Nightmare Custom Cycles. Mm -hmm. We realized years ago, if you step, if you, if you come across a uh, good, solid, um, local business, you want to stay with them. You know, uh, support them. Support them. Show support to them. Yeah. Just like here a while back, I, I went to have my truck worked on, and I wound up at the muffler shop out there on Farmington Road. Mm -hmm. The guy could rip me off for a hundred bucks. He said, "But hey, this is, and you're done." And he didn't charge me a dime. And I gave him a shout out. Mm -hmm. You know, small locally owned business, and, and he. he uh, he hooked me up, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you see the shirt, I know the camera don't pick it up very well, but you did see him at Andy. Uh, the shirt say, Nightmare's Ride, got a cool graphic on the back and everything. It's in the uh, uh, Ghouli Caps or whatever. There's different names for this one. Um, anyway, a company named Big Head Threads made it for us. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you a little story about that real quick. Let me tell you the type of company this is. Uh, I'm going to tell you, give you their number and that ain't going to happen. You can give them a number because I don't have my eyeballs. But uh, 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 Miss Mary will tell you about it. They're going to post uh, a thread to the name of the company here in a minute so you can check them out. I see Bob Levers from Stewart, Virginia. But anyway, um, let me t tell you about Big Head Threads. I've been wanting to have special shirts made just for Andy. Okay? I knew I was going to sell or offer for sale the guy shirts. Okay? The girl shirts, no. They were specially designed, special designed just for Nightmares Angels. Yeah. I met with this company. I met with Troy, very, very nice gentleman. Uh, he listens. You know, when I told him what I would like to have and kind of roughly gave him a good idea of it, I could tell he was listening to what I really wanted. Mm -hmm. So I can't, now, and I'm going to get the time frame wrong, I know. I don't know if it's later that afternoon or the next day. He sends me some design ideas. He said, this is what you're, what you're talking about. I said, yeah, it is. He said, but, uh-oh, here's my idea. See what you think. And a lot of times that don't go so well, okay? A lot of times they, they're trying to push something on you or towards you, you know? And then he showed me his idea. Well, I will say this. This, this this is his idea. Mm -hmm. I liked his idea, his company's idea, but I did my own. Mm -hmm. Okay, and me and you have designed uh, 20 different design shirts for the shop. Yeah. And I realized by looking at what Big Head Threads had designed for Nightmares Ride and Nightmares Angels, that this was this was, this company was we had to go there. We just had to stay with them. Yeah. And I told him, you know, this is why I wanted the girls, the late my lady shirts to say on the front was Nightmares Angels. Mm -hmm. And the girls, the Nightmares Angels, they didn't know, they knew nothing about any of this. This was going to be a surprise for them. Mm -hmm. Well, then I go to look into what he sent me, and then he had added one little word that meant the world to me, mm -hmm. and it simply said certified. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, not only did he listen to what I had to say, he realized how important these shirts were to me and how important Nightmares Angels are to me. Took it a step further. And he took it that step further, took it upon himself and spent the extra time to design these, these, these shirts and give them to me the way I wanted them, but yet make a couple of changes to where it just, it was off the hook. I mean, I really, really don't have, I, I, I could not have designed it in my head as well as what he said to me right you know and then uh, because of my own doings i kind of got backed up against the wall you know he was here he says when do you need them a month or two i said well you know kind of a week or two maybe <laughs> he said, when are you leaving and i told him and i saw his face kind of go white i looked up uh, nightmare you dropped the ball on this one mm -hmm. and he him hauled for a second or two he said no problem mm -hmm. i got you i got you i'll have them for you yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. We had, you know, he was he was sitting here in the office, and we haven't even designed the shirts yet, and he's already committing to a deadline that I, I, I honestly, I don't say I done it. Not only that, but to make sure I had good peace of mind 
when they came in, he hand delivered them. Now, if you live in California, I don't think he's going to hand deliver them, okay? That's not, I'm not going there. But because of what they meant to me, he hand delivered them and had me look at them and make sure I was happy with, yeah. with what Big Head Threads had done. I was not only happy, I was ecstatic. I liked what I saw when he sent me the artwork. Yeah. I loved it when I saw it on the shirts. I can say, Troy, Nightmares Angels, every one of them loved their shirts. Uh, they drew a lot of attention. Yeah. If you look at some of the Saturday photos, that's the only time the girls wore them was on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, if you look at some of the Saturday photos, especially the Saturday afternoon when we was at the Speedway, and they did a couple of group shots their own selves, all my girls standing there in um, their gray shirts with black writing, and the guy shirts with black shirts with gray writing. They look fantastic on the girls. They all fit. Uh, none of them had a, a, a problem with sizing or anything like that. And the screen printing is, is very high oh, quality. By the way, I've already washed yours several times. I forgot to say that. These shirts are screen printed. Mm -hmm. It's not a vinyl press on. It's mm -hmm. not uh, anything like that. It's high quality screen printing. Um, these are Hanes shirts. If I'm Victoria, I think that's what, what me and you talked about. That's what you told me. And them being Hanes shirts, if you know much about uh, uh, t-shirts and buying t-shirts. You know, if you go uptown to buy a shirt, and you usually try to, if you can afford one, you usually try to get a Hanes, okay? And he hooked us up. And not only am I so happy with what he did with the shirts, with the work, he also designed a banner for Nightmare's Ride. Yes. And it was the money thing is the reason I held up, okay? And in fact, when I, I run up on him today, I, I said, I still want you to do that banner when I get a chance. And I can't wait to see it. I, re I really can't wait to see it. Well, here's the cool thing about working with a small, privately owned company, especially one that's local to you or yeah. that um, has connections. Hello, Ray like you. Troy is a, it's a small family run business. It's a family run business. He does and, it with his children. Um, you ran into him quite by accident. By accident, so yeah. There's no yeah previous relationship. Uh, no, no. But Troy is here with us tonight and he has just said that if anybody in the Nightmare Ride community needs some branded merchandise, you talk to him at bigheadthreads.com mm -hmm. and he will give you a 10% discount on your first order. So just tell him that you're with Nightmare's Ride. That you saw it on Nightmare's Ride. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all now. That's what, that's what small family businesses can do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you. Troy, that, that's, that's really reaching out there, buddy, and I, I thank you, and I hope my viewers and listeners um, can, can appreciate it because you go to order a dozen or two dozen shirts and you take 10% off, you just took a fair, it, I'm not talking pennies off the bill, I'm talking dollars and not one or two, okay? Troy, I'm not going to say anything I know what my bill to you was, no complaints. Yeah. When you told me what the bill was, I didn't balk about it, I said I'm fine with that, I was happy with my pricing and everything like that. I just didn't get 10% off for some reason. But anyway, Jones is looking for a banner. Yeah, He's uh, there talking you go. to Troy now. Uh, there you go, Troy. So, anyway, uh, you got bigheadthreads.com. Yes. Put your link in there, uh, Troy, when you get a chance, please, sir. And their phone number is 336-577-7171. Or you can contact them at www.bigheadthreads.com. And Troy has posted the information okay. there for you. And I'm going to say so, this. Go ahead. Uh, we highly recommend this company, and we have really enjoyed meeting Troy and working with yes. him. Yes, yes. And um, I can see a very, very bright working relationship. I do too. I was going to say the same thing. I can see a long working relationship between Nightmares Ride and Big Head Threads. Yeah. Um, in fact, I told him we get enough these shirts. I know I can order them in, in, in lots of probably two, three, maybe four. Yeah. But for me to be able to sell them at the price we quote on the show, I need to do them in lots of 12. Mm -hmm. So we do have a few people to ask for them, the people who do want them. Mm -hmm. But I, just because Troy's worked with us and cut us some slack, it's not fair to me to go to him and say, hey, I only need four shirts. Because right. he, he can't do it at that price. Right. I'm not going to embarrass him by expecting that. So I would like to, to you know, uh, try to get the orders up to a dozen, two yeah. dozen yeah. of the black shirts. The gray shirts are not for sale. Uh, I'm, I, I've done had a couple of ladies, honestly. I've done probably had four or five different ladies uh, uh, text in or PM me 
wanting a gray shirt and they're not for sale. Right. Those just went to the Nightmares Angels and Nightmares Angels only. They will not be continued. I will not make no more. I know the angels say, well, make some gray ones. Just, no, I'm not going to make gray ones without that on the pocket. I'm not going to make it with just say Nightmares Angels. No. In, in me, to me, I just want my angels to be the only ones has that shirt. The only ones. So, ladies, if you want one, I can get you a black and gray one. I know the hookup on that one. Mm -hmm. I know somebody who knows somebody. All right? <laughs> and i got to say this about Nightmare, okay? If you're a good company, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell people you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, you know, it's been four or five months since I was out at uh, the muffler shop on mm -hmm. Farmington Road. Mm -hmm. And I still tell people today, you need muffler work, go out there and see that guy. Right. Okay. So uh, I have Big Head Threads card. We will keep them on board. And uh, that being said, I, I shout out and a personal thank you to Big Head Threads. The link's on there. Give them the phone number one, one more time, Miss Miriam. And I will tell you, as a customer, this is not this is not somebody paying me for sponsorship, okay? Mm -hmm. As a customer, as somebody who has used their service, who put them under and behind the eight ball, who gave them what I felt, thought was an unreasonable deadline, this company stepped up, they did the job, they did above board, they delivered when they said they would deliver, and they gave me a better quality product than what I thought I was going to receive. Yeah. yeah. My a big shout out tonight to, to a big head thread. Yeah. Phone number is three three six five seven 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 one seven one www.bigheadthreads.com Thank and, you, Troy, for what you did for Nightmares Ride. And, and, and only Troy will understand this. Troy, I will make Mike behave. Mike's a brown dog. You know what I'm talking about. We're well, going to make the black dog behave. <laughs> and the black dog, too. But, she tried to attack you. Yeah, but, but, but Troy, me and Mike and, and Troy, it, it, it's, it's not a funny subject, but anyway, Troy, I'm, I'm picking at you, buddy, okay? Thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody in there, and uh, I see Chuck Stott. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. I went to school with a Chuck Stott. I don't think this is him. Chuck, if you're from uh, which school in uh, West Virginia, uh, let me know. I mean, you know each other, you just don't realize it. Yeah, <laughs> I think we was in the same graduating year, class of 75. Uh, mm -hmm. That's Chuck Stott's I know. I like to look down the feet every once in a while and see if I was there. I see Mark Jones in there, that's Jonesy. Oh, speaking of Jonesy. <laughs> love me some Mac. <laughs> huh? I'm, Troy says, love me some Mac. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he does. Uh, of course, the angels understand that yeah, now. Yeah, Mac's yeah, a sweetheart yeah. when you get to know him. But uh, well, yeah. Well, wait, wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Me and you both. Now, all joking aside, because uh, the angels don't believe it too much. Me and you both have seen... The hell inside of Mike one night. Did we or did we not? Mm -hmm. Did Mike go from a pussy cat to I'm going to kill somebody? Uh -huh. Bad point to him. I don't care which one you pick. I'm going to kill. Now, is that not a true story? Yes. Mike was going to kill somebody that night. It was, Angels, I'm telling y'all, <laughs> that dog should have been called Jekyll and Hyde, not Mike, okay? That dog's mean. How about the night he chased four cops? Oh yeah, he put four car, he put four state police in a car, and he did it by himself, with no assistance from nobody else. That dog put four state police in a car, windows rolled up, because he's afraid to let the windows down, afraid the dog won't come in after him. I'm telling you, I love Mike to death. Mike is, Mike and me are tight, but angels, I'm warning y'all, that dog is mean. Damn, is that dog mean? I'm sorry, Jones, I had to tell it like it was. Okay. Hey, Bradley. So Bradley come up and saw us, him and Joanne. I heard I had about to break, that. I had to break Joanne's heart. I love her to death. She is nothing but a sweetheart. It was such a pleasure. Me and all the angels got to meet Bradley and them. We got to give them a very special award, thanks to the promoter up there. And uh, they come in their tractor and trailer, like they said they was going to do. The promoter said, you come in their tractor and trailer, we got a parking place for you. They did. And they did. Okay. Yep. But I got to meet Bradley and Joanne, and Joanne come to me. She said, "I want to be a Nightmares Angel," and yeah. I had to I had to say, "I'm sorry, uh, that can't happen." Mm -hmm. um, it was nothing against her. Mm -hmm. She's a sweet lady, and she's very internet savvy. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But these ladies and me go back probably almost two years now, mm -hmm. and we have an agreement. 
their five of us, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. If one should ever leave, then there will be four of us. I hope to God I never lose one of my angels. I, I would not know how to act. Okay? They're all beautiful, lovely, intelligent, caring, loving. Uh, yeah, ladies. but you get all four of them together and add, well, add nightmare and a little I, bit of alcohol. They're a mess. I, well, now, thank you on that one. That, I, was, I was trying to figure out how to say that, but you're right. Y'all are a yeah. mess. <laughs> we are a mess. But ladies, did we not have a good time? Uh, we did. I wanted I wanted to get the promoter to come over one night because he kept talking about Billy Hill. He kept saying, we're going to party on Billy Hill. And ladies and everybody watch the show, they kind of know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, let me tell you something. Party in the parking lot. Right, girl? Y'all know what I'm talking about, Jones. You know what I'm talking about, brother. That you sounds know, so high school. Party in the parking lot. Hey, we was under big night lights. You know, yeah, you could see. The first night, he was party in the parking lot in the front door of the motel. We was literally sitting there with beer coolers on ice in the front door. The, I mean, outside the front door, you know, in the front door of the motel. But we behaved ourselves. It was laughing, Joe. It was the first night. It was like it was like you had not seen a true friend in many, many years. There was some hugging and some hi and how are you and how was the trip and I listened to my girls talk to each other and they really, really cared about each other. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And then the next couple of nights, well, it was party in the parking lot, but we had a good time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what I'm very proud of my ladies and everybody in Nightmares Ride. To, uh, to, to put it that way, uh, yeah, we, we tilted a few. Nobody got drunk that I saw. Um, why? Because you were passed out already? No, no. I watched them. Uh -huh. They took their job serious. They knew they had to go to work the next day. Oh, they yeah. They knew they had to be over, uh, over at the racetrack. They knew they had to do live feeds. They knew we had shows to do. They knew they had interviews to do. They knew they couldn't do it with a hangover. So they drank enough to enjoy it and, and, and have a good time. We didn't stay up to four or five o'clock in the morning knowing we had to be there in two or three hours. We cut it off at a reasonable time so everybody could get some sleep. Mm -hmm. And in the last night, unfortunately, we had to cut it short again because me and Mark Jones had to get up and leave and head back at five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I am, um, yeah, parking lot was fun, Jonesy. We had a good time, brother. I want to go back and do it again. Oh, uh, Mike did try to attack a deer earlier. Yeah, <laughs> that poor deer. Won't stand a chance. I love Mike to death. I really do. Jonesy, you know, brother, Mike's right there in my heart. That's a mean damn dog. Well, I've seen him. I've seen him. That dog. I, I love the angels. When he death. goes on alert, he's he really scary. He gave him a false security. I'm a lovey dovey dog. Mm -hmm. That dog will rip your throat out. In mm -hmm. fact, I saw him become aggressive, but I'm not going there. Uh, one night up, up there, one morning up there. But anyway, um, yeah. He Mike, takes his Mike, job seriously. He takes his very, yeah. When he's got that best on, mm -hmm. uh, he has one job. He's working. And he's working, and he takes that job yeah. seriously. You cross him. Or blood. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's move on. Okay. Yes, okay. I see Harold Posey is watching. I don't know him, but I, uh, we can be friends. Mm -hmm. Just keep watching the show. Mm -hmm. um, Troy, buddy, you don't owe me a thank you. Okay. I see you in there, and, and you're more than welcome, Troy. But what Troy didn't realize is I have to thank him because I'm the one put him under restraints. Mm -hmm. I need these shirts, yeah. I need them through these sizes because yeah. it wasn't just one size. I, and out of all that, I need four gray ones. And guess what? Each one of them has to be a separate size. Yeah. Okay? And not only that, the four gray ones have to be printed in one color, and the black ones have to be printed in another color. Well, by the way, can I have them in a week, Charlie? And he said, yeah. And I thought, this guy's crazier than I am. You know? And I did. But he delivered. He did. He didn't up the price. He didn't try to tag on, well, you know, uh, had to work over the weekend, or got to do, yada, yada. No. Price he quoted me, he stood up and said, I told you his price. He's a stand up guy. It's a stand up business. And he just offered ten percent discount out there across the board. Just tell him so that any of y'all. Y'all are a nightmares yeah, ride yeah, viewer. Viewer. And he will give you a ten percent discount. Yeah. I can tell you I can tell you about what how Troy will handle that. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the ten percent discount and not try to jack you around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big head grabbers, please. Y'all give him a holler. Mm -hmm. OSI. I'll I get back on him real quick. Mm -hmm. Um I usually hit OSI once because there's so much to remember, but OSI, they, they are your premier 
uh, private detective agency here in the Carolinas, and they do travel. I do know that to be a fact. Uh, they have a, uh, a uh, site up on Facebook. You can go on there and contact them for any of your needs. They are military uh, trained, okay? And uh, most of them is pulled anywhere from two to four duties, four terms. What, what am I trying to say? Tours, sorry, tours. tours. Um, uh, some of them are very decorated for what they did. And if you know much and if you got very many more brain cells than Nightmare, you will know if they were, <laughs> was that funny? If they were trained by the military, they got the best training in the world, okay? These people come back and said, let me show you a little bit about what I know and what I can. So mm -hmm. uh, they're not, you know, if you need them to find somebody for you or track or you think your spouse is cheating on you or, or, or whatever, um, the, the bug sweeping thing is uh, is amazing, you know. But, uh, yeah, give them a holler, okay, OSI. Uh, another one to give a shout out to real quick is... Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, somebody asked me if I tried to platinum vodka because everybody knows I can't drink tater juice. Okay, tater juice sends me off the wall. I get fighting mad. This one's made for green, so I can't wait to try it. I want to thank a long-term sponsor who's been with us since last September, and that's Jones Motorsports. Uh, Jones Motorsports is owned and operated by somebody who was in NASCAR for 10 years. Worked with the likes of Jimmy Johnson, uh, Crybaby Kyle, I mean Kyle Bush. I'm sorry, it slipped, okay? Uh, Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They know their stuff. They own two cars right now. Cars double zero and car number 30. They're not racing them because the series they're in can't make up their mind what they're going to do. I have asked this series more than once. I asked them once to give me a reason why we're not racing, and I quit that. Now just give me an excuse. But I want to change it. Don't give me an excuse. Give me a believable excuse. Ain't got to be a reason. I'm kind of letting them off the hook with the reason part, okay? Just give me an excuse as to why we're not racing somewhere. I mean, come on. Indy, the track wanted us there. The promoter wanted us there. The drivers wanted to be there. The cars wanted to be there. The cars was ready. Why wasn't we there? Why wasn't we there? And I'm waiting for anybody to reach out and give me excuses why. But let me get down off that. Yes, OSI247.com. Thank you, uh, Mark Jones. I know you look that up for me. Uh, Mark Jones kind of jumps in the feed and helps me out when he knows I'm forgetting things. It is OSI247.com. And think about what that is saying. OSI is on the job 24 7 and they are yeah they are okay yeah. in fact um no i can't say them. in fact yeah 24 7 let's just leave it at that if you need anything any just about anything go to osi247.com tell them what you need and i'm going i guarantee they're going to say we, we got you covered you know you need to travel out of state they got you covered mm -hmm. you know um the only thing they didn't say was a bodyguard but i've seen a couple of those guys over there they can pull bodyguard duty, you know. I mean, uh, if uh, um, Michelle Pfeiffer was to call, hey, pick me over here. Uh, Cher, hey, she might be 70, but still got it going on, okay? Uh, Brad Pitt, maybe? Does that make you happier? I don't okay, know. Okay, yeah. Okay, anyway. All right. I don't think so, I'm the so, bodyguard so, type, but go ahead. Well, I didn't say you got one. I'm just throwing a guy's name out there so I don't have to sleep on the couch, which I've been doing Denise since we moved here. Denise is telling you shake, rattle, and roll. Yeah, I know. I know. We got sidetracked. All right. Let's 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 talk about uh, work. I'm sorry. I get sidetracked. I get into the show, the flow. You know, if you're behind the camera, you, you can feel it. We got a good flow going right now, and I got to get. I got to go to work. All right. Apparently, my director, Denise. Uh, yeah, director Denise. That kind of works. But anyway, let's talk about uh, low budget bill. Had to work uh, Let me have a drink real quick. Okay, we're going to talk about painting. Painting. But not right. the high dollar kind of painting. All right, I'm gonna let the cut out of the back. Okay. Back when. We were building, I was building, I was building bikes and working on my own stuff. Um, there was not very many paint shops around, okay? If they were, you couldn't afford them. They had to make a living. And only your high-end ones had um, 
a dedicated paint boot or a uh, a drying boot where they put the cars under heat and everything like that. Not a lot of heat, but enough to make the paint. So we had to figure ways to custom paint our bikes and come up with a uh, a good looking paint job. Now this is a place that I messed up more than once. Um, so here's the cat out of the bag. OS, uh, OSI, I'm sorry OSI. Uh, low budget bill. I'm on rattle can it. Okay. The whole bike will be rattle canned. Now I've heard people tell me, ah, pink, ah, it's not going to happen. Why? Back in that era, you didn't have a whole lot of choice of colors. You really didn't. You had, you could get black and flat or gloss, white. Uh, your primary colors, okay? So it comes out of a spray can. So you, you, unless you could go to a paint booth. You could not get your paint mixed to come up with all colors, okay? What are you looking like that for? You wasn't Just around then. Keep following. I'm listening to you. Okay. And you're looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about, but you wasn't there. No, no, no. Okay. But your your line of thinking is that we can't do the bike in pink because pink didn't come in a spray can back then. Now you get the point. Okay, but. I don't remember braided cables back then either. I'm not going to use braided cables on this yes, bike. No, we're not. I brought this, this, new cables. I we, showed you I'm cables. I'm going to do a different thing on the cables, okay? Everybody kept saying, you know, let's do a little bit of build. Now you'll see a good argument between host and co-host about, about the damn bike. I deserve some blame night. Well, you're going to get some blame. You're going to get some blame because let me let me get on, get on this and you'll see where some of the blame's coming from. Okay. Now, believe it or not, you could get pinstriping paint, but it was kind of hard to come by. So what we would use, and you gotta be yeah, a little bit older than my dog down there, we'd, have, we'd go to a model store and buy testers, T-E-S-T-O-R. Okay. It was model paint for cars, for model cars, seriously. And we would pick up a couple of good model paintbrushes, and that's what we used to pinstripe that right now. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now, everybody's wondering, well, how did you make a stand on the bike? Well, believe it or not, even back then, we could get a semi, sort of, kind of halfway decent clear coat, which is a clear, you go over and take the paint. Okay. So, that being said, I'm letting, I'm letting a little bit of the secrets out of the bag, but let's back up and let me let me regroup and get my thought process. I was having too much fun going the other way, but, uh, and I appreciate being interrupted, but I don't like being interrupted sometimes. Huh. Uh, no, no. In the feet and all that, but anyway, that's just me. All right, you hear me shaking. I'm not going through the whole process, okay? Here's what I like to do is I like to shake it, and I like to shake it like this, and I like to swirl it around. Therefore, I'll shake that little note. All right, now I was going to bring the spring arm down, but it's not quite ready, okay? It's kind of in a drying process. Right. And I wasn't going to let you spray paint it no, here on the I wouldn't show. spray paint it here, and I didn't think my landlord or you, either one, would like me spray paint something. It's a wall, so we didn't do it. But anyway, here's some things that, that and you, you said it long ago. Okay, let's prep the metal for paint. You follow me? Right. You sanded it down. You've got the paint smooth. Now, you should be able to run your hands across that paint job, and it should be almost, feel almost as smooth as the size of this can. All right? Mm -hmm. If it's not, you need to keep sanding. Mm -hmm. All right? The devil, uh, the secret to a good paint job, believe it or not, is the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. The better you sand, the better you get everything laying down, when you get ready to paint, your paint job will look 10 times better. Mm -hmm. If there's at least a little divot or, you know, um, uh, take a low budget bill. It, it, it comes from where it's a high gloss black. It has a great primer and then the bare metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can actually, before I start sanding, I can run my fingers across it real lightly. I could feel a high gloss black, and I could feel this little divot for a rock or whatever it hit, and chip the paint, and I could feel my finger go inside and touch the primer, or down the metal and then back out. Mm -hmm. You cannot say, well, I'll just keep putting coats over top of that and it goes away. Ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. This is, this is not a state road where you put a patch on it, okay? It don't work that way. So what you need to do is keep sanding that area down until it's completely smooth. Now, also, Say you've got a stretch on your swing arm or your frame somewhere, 
that you've got a lot of black paint and it's all in good shape and you don't want to sand it all off. Well, you can lead into that. Okay? Feather it in. Feather it in. Thank you. All right. What I mean by feathering it in is as you're sanding, you sand from your high gloss black, which you should get rid of because if you still got high gloss black, this is not going to stick. It's not going to do it. Okay. If you see any place shiny on there is paint or paint, you've got to keep sanding. But anyway, you keep sanding till you come down and then you can see your layer of primer behind it and then from the primer to the metal. Okay, it, it, it's kind of like a stair step, but you should never be able to feel it. It should take you an inch to three inches to feather from one all the way down to bare metal. Okay, just remember if you go to bare metal, you do need to protect it as soon as you can because if not, you'll have to have surface rust and now you've created a whole other problem. All right, so sanding unfortunately it's something you got to do we we, we had a, uh, a show about your sandpapers and everything i don't like using you remember I, I think on the show i told everybody the lower the grit the coarser the sandpaper okay and, and it is true you go to any paint body shop they can go out on the hood of your brand new car three thousand four thousand grit sandpaper water sandpaper splash a little bit of water on there sand it back and forth it's not gonna hurt they're not removing enough paint or clear coat, just leaving those. All they're doing is removing a, a light coat of oxidation. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I usually like to start in the 180s to 220s, 240s, all depending on the mood I'm in. And because if I start low, usually I wind up with a 220, 240 to finish, or maybe if you know if we're going to uh, for a, a show bike look, we'll get up 300s, maybe up to six, 800. You know, depends on how smooth and every, need everything. Mm -hmm. So the details is in the sanding to start with. Now, once you sand, um, it creates dust. So I highly recommend if you can do it outside because you're going to have dust all over the garage. And then you got to clean every part, every nook and cranny. So, if you can try to do it outside. I like to do it outside to the fan facing me, just a simple $19 box fan from one of your big box stores blowing behind me or, or blowing from me or across me. That way, any dust, it blows it away from me and it's not reaccumulated back on the bike and it's not going anywhere. Okay? Okay. So, that's one of the things I like to do when I'm hand sanding. Uh, now, once you get done sanding this thing down, uh, by hand. Trust me, your friends are going to be tired. Now, you're going to use, I've used ink pens before. The best thing to do is go to one of your big box lumber stores, get you various sizes of dowel pens, wooden dowel pens. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can wrap you know, your sandpaper around it to get into your joints, you know, or where frames meet or other, other parts meet. Uh, I, I have used, I like to keep that laying around, I also keep uh, two by two and two by four short pieces mm -hmm. because if it's a place with a 45 or 90 degree angle, I can put my whole sandpaper there and get right in the corners to do my sandpaper. Well, sanding. and they didn't used to have those foam sanding uh, blocks, uh, but they do now. Mm -hmm. And those are very um, flexible. Yeah. And they will go around the tubes and into curves and that sort of thing. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, yeah, I know I could go ahead and sandblast it, it's done. I drop it off, I pick it up the next day, and it's down to the bare metal. But in keeping in the theme of low budget build, mm -hmm. is we're going to do it ourselves. I'm mm -hmm. teaching people how to do this their own self, how to prep the metal, how to, even if we're not going to paint the frame or whatever with a rattle can, mm -hmm. how they can paint small parts, okay, mm -hmm. um, to where they look good. If it's chrome, um, be careful on your chrome for two reasons. Chrome is a plating, plating process. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it means that, that you've got a base metal, then you've got nickel and, and all this on top of it. Um, if you say too aggressively, you get into the brass and then you've got other issues. Um, your chrome, I, I would go to powder coating, which we didn't do back then because the powder coating was not known about back in, in this period of time. Also, another thing with chrome, some of your smaller parts is really plastic. It is not metal. It has a 
chrome plastic coating around it. You think you're you're polishing uh, or sanding your chrome off. And this thing you know, a big chunk falls off and you're looking at kind of a beige looking plastic. And now you have another problem, okay? So be careful when you're trying to uh, sand uh, chrome and prepping for paint. There's a special process. Remember, you're dealing with metal flakes. Uh, this has nothing to do with this fake virus. I mean, this virus that's going around. Uh, or they say it's going around. It's not going around. But anyway, we won't, we won't go there. Uh, wear a face mask. Okay? Because you are dealing with fine metal uh, uh, right. par uh, particles. And you don't want that stuff in your lungs. Okay? Right. Um, I use, what I usually use is the uh, mask back until here lately you can buy it at any of your local big box lumber stores you know for wood sanding and stuff like that mm -hmm. usually that will work and i usually wear it uh when i'm spray painting as well because this is toxic chemicals mm -hmm. okay even if you're standing the wind is blowing another way trust me it can walk around enough it can get in your lungs it's not going to kill you right then it ain't going to kill you six months from now but it could cause long-term damage mm -hmm. all right so uh wear your mask uh, yep. It's not comfortable, but you you will uh, you'll be okay with it later. Now, you have prepped the metal and you've sanded it down, uh, and you're thinking about painting it tomorrow. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, one thing I will do is take a big trash bag and wrap it up in a trash bag. If it's something I can't, like a swing arm or or anything smaller than that, it keeps your night air and night dampness away from it. Be prepared. Don't be surprised if you have to do a light sanding the next morning to possibly, don't have them all the time, but to possibly remove any light surface rust. Okay. Now, there is other products out there, but I'm telling you what we had to use back then. There wasn't too much thing known as tight cloths. There was, but they were kind of specialty and you had to. What was used back then was baby diapers and not the disposable kind. Okay, that didn't come out till later. You find somebody with a baby and you want a new diaper, not one's been previously used. Thank you very much. I don't care if it's been washed, you still don't want it. The reasons for that. The reason when you use that is it's been washed. Okay. It has been injected with chemicals. Washing powders, bleach, whatever. Right, but the old fashioned cotton diaper is also left lint. Yes, but that's what we had to use. So you would use once you're done sanding and you're getting ready to paint i would use two diapers one on one hand or the other to hold the part with and i'll get to that in a minute the other one is you know yeah uh, you could go to a gas station or maybe you're one of your friends rich friends had a small air compressor because a lot of us didn't have air compressors back then we had to do it by hand okay so you go to you try over to your friends and use air compressor and psh, blow everything off that, in theory, should get everything off. The problem, I found out later on with that, when I started painting, I couldn't figure out why I was getting these little dots in there and come to find out. It didn't have an air dryer or something with an air compressor, and the air compressor was building peat and spitting water oil out the nozzle and blasting it across the metal, and then I was trying to spray the paint on top of it, and there created another issue. You see where I'm going on having sometimes redo things over and over and over to figure out what the problem was? Well, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to save you some steps from doing that. You went hold apart with one hand with a baby diaper and wipe it down real good. After I took an uh, air hose or whatever and blowed it off real good, I would turn around and wipe it back down. Making sure I never touched it with my grubby little fingers, and I'll tell you right in a minute, and why don't let it bump your arms. Uh, if you're afraid it might happen, and, you know, if you're, if you're messing with your frame or whatever, uh, that's simple. Put on a long sleeve shirt. Even in the middle of summertime, put on a long sleeve shirt. Put on a good solid raincoat. Ink on a cat. So your oils out of your body cannot touch that metal. Because here's what happens. Once you fingerprint one, that's what most painters call it. Once you fingerprint it, once your finger touches that or your arm touches that, you've just left body oil on that metal part. This will not stick to oil. I don't care, okay? Everybody says, well, this barely touched it, don't matter. This is not going to stick. I don't care even if you take it to a top quality painter. If you have fingerprinted it, they're going to clean it back again because even with today's air compressors and every all the new paint equipment, paint will not stick to oil. Okay? If you don't believe me, let me give you a little experiment. 
cheap, easy experiment. Go in the kitchen, get a piece of aluminum foil. Follow me? Okay. And go over to the cupboard. Grab some cooking oil. Just burn it have it on your fingers. Uh -huh. Got me? Fingerprint that that piece of aluminum foil. Okay. Well the garage. Spray paint it. See what happens. The same thing happens on aluminum foils will happen to your metal that you're trying to paint. Same thing. No difference. That's just a little experiment to show you that yep, straight up. That's what, that's what so happens. So the only way to get the oils off is to wipe it down. Can you neutralize it with alcohol or gasoline or anything well, like that? Back then we did use gasoline until we realized they was petroleum based and it was not letting the paint stick very well. We didn't right. figure out why it was flaking off. And again, stop, redo it all over again. Right. What we found we could use back then, please be careful with this. I, I ask you not to do it, but you can use an alcohol based paint thinner. Okay, on a rack. Here's the problem with an alcohol-based paint thinner. It's highly, highly flammable. Okay, you get that on a little diaper or your, whatever you're cleaning it with. You get it on the frame on your hands. Somebody lights up a cigarette, especially in the summertime with high humidity. These fumes can travel. It's a vapor that you can't see, and they can travel. Next thing you know, woof, and it's too late. You're Definitely on fire. do this outside. Do it outside do. in fresh air, plenty of ventilation. I hate to say it, keep a fire extinguisher close hand if you're using something like that. Um, that's one of the few places I'm going to cross the line on this building and tell you to, to please use something that, that's non flammable to clean, to clean the paint. And there's products out there. But back then we didn't have that, mm -hmm. so we took the risk. But okay, now let's back up. All right, we've sanded down, mm -hmm. everything's feathered in, everything's smooth. We've got it where we want to go, and we're going to paint it. Now, we didn't have paint booths, okay? So maybe a friend of ours had a small outbuilding that we would hang plastic around the side of it, over the windows and stuff like that. Um, sometimes we had to paint outside. And I've had people come to me and say, well, Nightmare, I, I don't have uh, paint stands. In other words, something to put a part on to paint it. I'd say, well, grab you a couple pieces of angle iron and weld it up. Well, I don't know how to weld. That's okay. That's, that's not an issue. Can you drive a nail? Yep. Get you a three, four foot piece of two or four. Nail it to a tree. Okay? Use a coat hanger. Not a plastic one, dummy. Because it's break. Use a metal coat hanger. Use a strong piece of wire. Tie off of your, where you nail it to the tree. Tie off around it into whatever you're painting. And there you go. Mm -hmm. You can paint. Do not paint on a day the wind's blowing. You're like, well, the paint will dry. Well, yeah, it blows all the pollen right across what you're painting. Trust me. Sanded more than one down before that happened. Okay, so try to pick a day that when it's not blowing. Okay, now you've got it hung up outside somewhere. Here's a little thing I do. Nobody's ever told me it was right or wrong or in between. I found it. I found out it works for me, and I found it out by accident. Um, if it's like 80, 90 degrees outside, I would let it hang out in the sun for about an hour. Okay, to warm the metal up. I found out by doing that that this stuff is more receptive. The metal is more receptive to this. It will stick a little bit better. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, just before I got ready to paint, I would hold my little baby diaper rag or whatever and then wipe down again in case there's any pollen or pollution that blew across it before I got ready to paint. Then now I'm ready to paint. Okay. You shake the can. You've done this, you've done this, you've done this, and you're ready to paint. All right. Now, I've watched people do this and it irks me to no end. I'm not going to take the lid off and do it, but imagine I'm pushing down on the spray thing. They'll push this down. What the hell are you doing? That's what I do. What the spray hell it, are you doing? And then I move and I spray it and yeah. I spray it and yeah. I spray it. Why? Why? Throw, the tra throw, this, throw this in the trash can. You just did just as much good. Alright? I'm going to use my phone as an example. I'm going to try to hold it sideways to the camera so they can see. I have my finger on the nozzle. Uh -huh. Follow me. Uh -huh. I'm getting ready to paint. Uh -huh. Follow me. Read the cans. It will tell you 6 to 12 inches away. They're not lying to you. They're not trying to get you to waste paint. Okay. They will tell you to put on light coats and go back and make it a little heavier and a little heavier each time. They're not lying to you. Take it from Nightmare. That works. Okay. 
Now, some people say paint from bottom to top, top to bottom. I, I've tried both ways and both ways work. Okay, I'm happy with both ways. All right, now, you're going to paint. You follow me? I'm turning around the camera to see it. Anyway, you ready to paint. Let's do it this way. Yeah. Start your spray over here before you ever come to your product that you're going to paint. All right, we're going. Stop. 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 Here's a couple reasons why. You're using aerosol can spray paint, people. Even though you shook it, it might sputter. It might spit. Okay? If you come by here, and you're spraying like this, there's a good possibility it's going to spit then. The reason you want to start again is you're going to get a little bit of bit paint buildup in your spray nozzle right here. Okay? So if you start out here, guess what's going to happen that little dollop of paint? Where's it going? Out in the air. Not here. If you start here on your metal, you just blow it on your air and it splatters like a bug. You know, the last thing goes to a bug's mind when it hits the windshield is asshole. And that's what happens to the, well, that's the truth. Am I right or wrong? Okay. So wait, tell me I'm wrong. No, no, no. Okay. Right. That's what it looks like when you paint. Okay. So start out here, six to 12 inches, whatever you feel comfortable. Start with light coats. Okay. Light coats. Here's why. Have you ever painted anything? I'm going to ask a stupid question, and this is for the viewers. Have you ever painted anything you thought was dry and you went back and touched it? Uh, yeah, I do that. And if, no, no, and it's tacky. I'm impatient. No? Well, no, well, no, that's not, that's not where I'm going. It's tacky, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit sticky? Yeah. Okay, keep that in mind, people. Keep in mind what I'm trying to tell you. You do this, okay? You got down here and you're done. You get ready to put a second coat on, all right? The reason you do light coats is the paint that is on here has become tacky. It's become sticky. Guess what's going to happen when I come back across it again? It's going to want to stick even more. You follow me? If you try to lay the whole coat on at one time, you're going to get what we call either a curtain or a run. Us old people, us old painters, we call them curtains. Why do we call them curtains? Because they start here and they go down and up and down and up and down. It looks like curtains hang on your wall in there. Okay? How do you fix it? You let it dry, but you can wipe it off. But guess what? You get to sand that whole piece and start all over again. Remember what Nightmare told you about learning the hard way? By sanding and doing it all over again? Yeah. I'm saving you some time for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Okay? So now, you're down to your, you put on two coats. Okay? Two light coats. Don't touch it. Okay? Please don't touch it. If you do that, guess what? Now you got a fingerprint right in the middle of your damn paint job. Okay? The can will kind of give you a good ballpark idea as to when it should be tacky. Okay? If you're down in, in Sacramento next to the beach, a lot of humidity, it's going to tack up just a little bit. It's going to take a little longer. If you're out in Arizona where not a lot of humidity but a lot of high heat, it's going to tack up a little bit quicker. Use the old beaner up here. Figure it out for yourself. If you're not sure, here's something I did. Find another piece of metal kind of close to what you're shooting. It's over here. Okay, and you're doing this one. If you're not quite sure, touch this one over here because you're not going <laughs> to use it. All right, you're not going to use that one. That will tell you if it's okay to paint over here. Okay. Again, a lesson I had to figure out my own damn self. Okay. okay. Yeah, I get irritable sometimes because I try to give these tips out and people say, well, who taught you that or how'd you learn that? Well, I Google and I don't see it. This is what us old gray beards, we figured out. We messed up. More than once, trust me, more than once. And then to go back and sand that piece all the way down and start all over and maybe not know what we did wrong and have to stop and try to figure out what we did wrong and change something. So I'm giving you 40 plus years of rattle can experience. And if you'll listen to me, if you'll follow some simple steps, okay, you can, you can rattle can a lot of things, save you a ton of money, and come out with just a good paint job. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about Rattle Cannon 1 and going to Easy Ride or some of these big shows like that. But you can Rattle Cannon 1. Well, and now all, it can be done. It can be done. We did. Yeah. Uh, rat Trap. Uh, I Rattle Cannon Frame, went to Easy Rider. But it took me three weeks. 
okay? It took me three weeks to rattle can that frame. Mm -hmm. But I, three, uh, because I did a lot of sanding, I probably worked three weeks just on the sanding on the frame to get it ready to get ready to paint, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Ian's right. Don't forget to wear your mask before you paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't forget to do so, this. So, let me ask you a question yeah. real quick. I'm not done, but go ahead. Well, because it has to do with painting. Yeah. But we were talking about um, when you were sanding the metal that you were painting and you were feathering in from your paint to your primer to bare mm -hmm. metal. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, are we going to prime the bare metal or are we just going to start with our finished color? No, no. You always start with primer. Primer. So primer. we prime That's the what metal it is. You, always, you always lay down a primer coat to start with. That's not primer. Yes, it is. Right there. Primer. See that? Primer. Okay. I thought primer was gray. Well, thank you. You made a good point. I was getting to that, but you made a good point. Okay. What Miss Miriam just said, in case, you, in case you didn't pick it up, she said, well, she thought primer was gray. Well, I'm going to tell you a little something, a little trade secret that I may get shot for. You know, it's like magicians giving away inside secrets. Uh -huh. Primer, nowadays, uh, Purple Haze is one of them. I did this to Purple Haze, and you remember Anger Management was another one I did it to. You can get tintable primer, okay? We have found out if you use a tinted primer, it will, believe it or not, straight up, it will change the color of your finished paint, okay? But you can't get tintable primer in spray paint. You can get <laughs> black and white, okay, or gray. Okay. That's, that's, that's the three you right. got. So, but my question in was... Spray. So after you sand, before mm -hmm. you put on your finish coat, you do want to spray the, the bare metal primer. with primer. Now I am going to tell you, and you're bringing it up, and I got the can turned backwards. I am using a primer, I always use a primer on a frame that has a rust inhibitor. You follow where I'm going with that name? There's a certain paint out there, the first name starts with rust. Okay. Okay, it has a rust inhibitor, and there's a, you know, like an okay. OEM fall behind it. Got it. Like, that helps seal the metal, it helps stop rust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you always lay your primer down first, and then you your your paint over top of that. Now I, I'm gonna go a little bit more about the paint, then I'm gonna hit um, what we're doing, show my paint job versus what I'm doing now, and we'll surprise everybody. But uh, I'm not gonna give everything out on the low budget bill. It's going to be flat black, okay? Why? Everybody wants it done. Everybody's asking, let's do one old, old school style. Well, old school style, if you want to can one, I'm not blue, doing blue. I don't want a white one. Uh, I'm not doing any other basic colors. I know where the theme is going with this bike. It's going to be black. It's going to have some chrome on it. It's going to have some other colors on it as well, okay? Not pink, because black is not anymore. But anyway, we're going with this when you see the bike done and later on we're going to come back to the rattle can i'm going to rattle can some stuff i'm going to show you how we did some custom work using rattle can spray paint okay and it will it will blow your mind but where was catch me where was that a few months ago we had painted and, and oh paint in the metal all right like i said you want to start out here away then once you're fog and that's what comes out looks like a fog it comes out pass over stop Start again, go back, start, okay? Now, as you're going back and forth across your painted surface, what you're wanting to look for, if you see a steady, if you see um, a steady line going across like this, you need to back up a little bit, okay? When you first start laying on, you should see a line about this, and they should overlap a little bit. Your first coat, you should see very little primer. You see a little bit of primer, but mostly metal, okay? Because what you're wanting to do is lay down just enough paint so your next coat will stick. Okay? Then, then you go back. I, I, I'll, I'll answer your question and I promise. You go back with your second coat. Third coat. Each one gets a little heavier and a little heavier. Okay? To the point that all you are seeing is primer and primer only. If you do it that way, you, won't, you will not have your curtains and your runs. What causes a curtain and a run is basically like if you bake a cake two-tier cake, follow me, and what happens if you put the icing on before the cake cools off? Slides down the side of it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens to paint. If you put
put the paint on too fast, too heavy, too quick, and the paint has not had a chance to, we call it flashing over, in other words, the chemicals evaporating out of it, because there is chemicals in here, and some of it's alcohol, not a drinkable alcohol. Trust me, that's a little place. I was making a little joke, okay? But what you want to let it do is let that, we used to call it flashing out, curing, whatever you want to call it, evaporate just a little bit, and then you put your next coat on, it sticks. If you do it like this and you build your layer slowly, then that won't happen. You will not get a curtain or a run. If you get a curtain or a run, you're trying to put your paint on either too heavy or too quick. Okay? And if, if you're getting down to a job and, you're, and you really want to do this, again, it's like I told somebody with another project the other day. Go find you an old gas tank. Go to a junkyard. Get you an old fender, car fender, car door, anything cheap. Take it home. Sand it down. Prep it. Learn how to paint on that old piece of metal. And you'll get your technique down, you'll get everything down, and then you get ready to start. Now, here's an inside trade secret. On the back of every can, if you will look close enough and hunt for it, you will find something called a lot number. Lot means, uh, and uh, somebody who works in alcohol and some other industries know this, a lot number tells when it comes down the assembly line. The batch. The batch. So it's called a lot. Okay. Now, if this can was produced today, this can was produced tomorrow, this can is going to be a different color than this can. It could very well be. No, yes. no, you're wrong. There's no could to it. This can is going to be a different color than this can. I guarantee it. Maybe only one shade. It may be just one shade. Yeah, everybody says, well, it's all computer. Yeah, yeah. Don't give a dead blame, okay? Computers make mistakes. Maybe the ambient temperature was different. Maybe the humidity was different. Maybe the can temperature was different. Maybe you didn't put one micro milligram of aerosol in there as much as it did on this one. Your colors are going to be different, okay? If you've ever seen somebody rattle can something, you look at it and you see a, um, a black black here, and over here it's black black, but it's not the same shade as this, what happened? They bought their spray paint one day and went back really didn't have enough and bought another can. Same store, same name brand, okay? Just a different day and a different lot numbers. So here's what I do. If I'm gonna spray something and it's gonna be it's gonna stay that color, buy more than what you need. Okay. You go to these big box stores, any place you go to get this, if they don't have enough out there, tell them you want a case. A case of twelve cans, okay? Buy a case. All right. Mm -hmm. A lot of stores, if you use, um, say, six cans, you take those six cans back. Mm -hmm. But those six cans will all come out of the same lot. That means they will produce one right behind the other in the same hour, same time frame, whatever, but they're going to be the same color. That makes a difference, especially when you get down to the final paint. And yes, 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 double, triple, quadruple, yes. The final paint job on low budget bill, I will rattle can the paint job. Okay. Uh, now that being said, I am going to do a uh, uh, flat black. All right. But I will show you when the time comes how to do certain things with this paint and other things later around. You can pick up. And a couple of things that will surprise you, and how to come out with a custom paint that you can be proud of, that you can use, that you can ride anywhere and be happy with. Now, here's something else. I know everybody's probably seen this everywhere. This is blue painter's tape that you use for the house. Mm -hmm. Trust me, buy the, go ahead and buy stock in this, okay? You will use this on a motorcycle constantly if you do much painting. I use blue. Don't use the green. It, it, it adheres too hard, too heavy, and it is a problem to get back off. I don't like to wide unless I'm doing a huge like saddlebag section or whatever. So about one inch wide blue painter's tape. And it comes in rolls. They're not very expensive. And uh, hello, Landon Bros. It's not very expensive, and uh, it'll save you time, energy, effort, and money. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing that we're going to be picking up later on and using, and you see it at most of your big box stores or your auto stores, is some pinstriping. And 
I'm going to leave you with that when it comes to painting. We're not going to put the pinstripe even on the bike. Well, we are, but it's just not going to stay. Okay. Um, yeah. The, the painter's tape is very, very useful when you're painting, mm -hmm. but it's also really good to use when you're identifying, when you're taking things apart. Yes, Lynn and Brothers knows that now. Yes, because you can tag Winter's out going. and you can write on the mm -hmm. tape so you have your parts identified. Yep, yep. If it's a car, if it's four carburetor bolts, you can put on it four carburetor bolts, write it on there, put in a ziploc bag, lay it down, you go back, you know exactly what where mm -hmm. them four bolt heads. Yeah, come but from. if it's a, a cable or a wire yeah. or yeah, that's there is Joanne, that is Bradley's fiance. You got to meet her up at Indy. Mm -hmm. And that was great. A lot of fun. She's a sweetheart. Very pretty lady. Very mm -hmm. a lot of fun to be around. Yeah. But And he says the blue won't stick. Um as it won't stick and it comes off real easy. It comes off real easy, yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. It leaves very little residue. Uh, I will tell you how to pull that off. Uh, I will tell you if you're going to tape something up, um, be ready to shoot or do whatever you're going to do sometime that day. Don't leave it on there three or four days. Uh, even with the blue, it don't. Uh, it usually don't leave res residue, but if you put it out in the sun, you might be in for a surprise. Okay? Yeah. But that's a little bit. Remember, take your time. Okay? When you're going to do this, don't be in a hurry. Uh, well, I was telling you a while ago, I like to preheat the metal just a little by letting it lay out in the sun or, or hang out in the sun and warm up just a little bit. Um, you know, like right now, our, our shop, uh, or my shop, or whatever, it's, you know, we're in the summertime, it, it, it's warm, even the shop is warm, mm -hmm. but the concrete floor is still cool. Mm -hmm. The part was laid on the concrete floor. Mm -hmm. It transferred the coolness from there to the metal, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I take it out in the sun and go to shoot it, the metal may want to sweat just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Condensation, you follow me? So therefore, uh, hanging out in the sun, I let it warm up. You don't want it to where it's like 470,000 billion, million, zillion degrees where you can't touch it. But you want to let it warm up to where you think it's about the same temperature as what you're shooting. These cans will tell you 55 or 60 degrees. That, that's, that's good. There's not a problem with that. Okay? That temperature is a good working temperature. But I like to let the metal warm up just a little bit more. I have found that the spray paint will stick just a little bit better. Okay? And that's just personal. All right? Now, as far as curing, again, each spray can manufacturer, each spray paint man, has different curing times. Most of the time, two to four. Here's what I like to do. Um, if I was to shoot something outside, when the time comes, I will shoot something outside. Uh, I've shot a deer outside, a couple of squirrels, a bed. oh, never mind, different shots for shooting. Um, I did shoot Bambi, you know, I don't have a problem shooting Bambi or Rocky or even Bullwink if he comes across the property, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, when you shoot something outside, uh, be careful, okay, because you can't have a little gust, you can get a little bit of pollen, a little bit of dust on it, so trying to find some place that the wind, if a little breeze was to blow, you know, the backside, up close to a barn around the backside, because when the wind goes by, it'll come around kind of like a point like this, if you're anywhere inside that point, it will not blow from your paint. I don't let my paint hang outside overnight, okay, I will try to be ready to shoot sometime around noon and then around four or five o'clock I will pick some type of stand to hang up inside there's our dog Lexi uh, hang up inside to wherever I can and let it finish curing and drying at night right. I usually like to let my paint cure 24 hours before I touch it right. if I'm going to paint it again um, I may go ahead and, paint and just repaint again so I'm not actually touching and go through the whole process okay um we one time I remember got our hands on an old refrigerator box uh -huh. and used it as a small paint booth for some small mm -hmm. pieces we were doing some work mm -hmm. too, and that'll help keep wind off of it too. It will. It will. Yeah. But you know, there's there's different things you can do. Um, to me, and I'm not throwing a slur to me, spray painting is common sense. But the problem is, is I've done it so long, I think, again, like something I said a while ago, I think because I know it, everybody else should know it. And uh, I have to stop and realize a lot of what's going on is I had to teach myself. Mm -hmm. And and people, trust me, I made a lot of mistakes. I had to resand more metal than I care because I would get runs or curtains. We're talking about fish eyes at a later date. Um, and it's not, 
eyes on a fish, it's a, I a, a painting problem. Uh, orange peel is another problem we're talking about. I'll tell you how to take care of that and what to do on that. But uh, uh, take your time. Be prepared. Be prepped. If you know somebody's got a garage or a container or 50, 200 bucks, great paint booths. They really are. Here's the reason why. You go to one end and put your little box band with a air conditioner filter over it, and I'll suck your paint fumes out. All right? When you get done, clean it up. Let the sun just beat down and bake the mud out of that paint. Okay? So if you've got the, the place for something like that, that's a great, great, great paint book. It really is. So grab one, set it up, use it, and you, you will be very, very happy with your results. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to talk about right now is people who do not do not have access to something like that. Right. Okay? If you don't, again, like I said, well, though, if you don't have access to um, make one out of metal, four foot, the reason I said a four foot two or four uh, is about, you need to be along that length because you need to be able to make a complete circle. Right. Okay? You need to be able to shoot upside down and from on top. And saying that, if I know that I have to shoot something from the bottom up, that's the first thing I'll shoot. It's easier to shoot that with a full can of paint than it is a half can of paint. That's you're true. liable to get sputter and you'll regret it. So I'll try to do anything I'm shooting from, from the bottom up first. And then I'll do my sides because you can run all the way down. Now another thing with this too, um, when you're spraying side to side and you're getting down low on a can, okay, if you push that button and you, and you hear it, and you'll physically hear it sputter, stop. Do not make a pass across your paint job. Why? You find like a nightmare did, you got to stop and resand it because you're running low on propellant and it's just shooting paint and it hits and splatters and you got a mess. So drop the can off to the side, pick up a fresh can, shake it, rattle it, roll it, and start all over. Now, what's left on the bottom is great for little touch ups here or there. And speaking of touch ups, I'm going to pop this off maybe. Make you. Okay. Now, here's what these lids are good for. You know what these lids are really good for? I do. You sure do. You should. Okay, here's what these lids are good for. Um, you got a really, really, really insanely small place you got to paint. A small part you got to paint. You can't spray up in there because it's going to run on you. What, what do I do? How do I fix this? I'm going to tell you how to do that. Shake your can up, spray a little bit of paint in there in one corner. Go grab a Q-tip. Grab a Q-tip in there and paint. And what I'm talking about is like if you're trying to be a professional like me and you're trying to paint inside of a... Uh, of an owl head or, or some little angle way up in there that nobody can see but you, but you want it painted and you know if you shoot it with this, it's going to run, curtain everywhere, you got a problem, how do I do that? Like I said, shake it up, spray it a little bit in, not much, by all you need, you'll look, you'll see it puddle right down there in the corner. Remember, this is nice and clean, okay? You get down in there, nice and wet, do your little bit of painting, drop your cube tip off the side and go on. Those inexpensive model building paint brushes are also yeah, great for that. For touching up. Paint. Um, another thing's good for touch up, believe it or not, is go inside. Uh, tell your wife you're going to let her have the afternoon off and she can go downstairs or go in the room and read or whatever. Go buy one of her cheapest plastic bowls. You don't want an expensive one here. I'm going to tell you why. The cheap ones have quite a bit of uh, petroleum in it. Okay? Uh -huh. So. When you spray paint in there and you do that, you got a little bit of paint, you pour it out, and then a little bit later you look in there, there's paint all stuck inside this bowl. If it's a good quality plastic bowl, guys, I'm trying to keep you out of trouble, that paint's going to stick. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to come out, okay? That's true. But one of the cheap ones, believe it or not, you just about take your finger and wipe like that, and it won't stick to it. It'll peel right, right out. It'll peel right out, and you can use it over and over and over again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's yeah. Terry, Terry Norbert, Nor Norbert, I'm sorry. AC! There's AC. I haven't seen AC or heard from AC in a long, long time. Brother, it's good to have you in there. AC is always, always a hoop Yes, having. I know. But that's a little bit about uh, shake, rattle, and roll, how to spray paint with a uh, aerosol can. And as time goes on, I will take you uh, to where I'm painting. And i uh, got to figure out how to do it with a camera and not get stuff all over the camera. You know, uh, overspray is what it's called. Got to figure out how to do that, and uh, I've got an idea. Uh, I think it'll work, but uh, 
gonna make double sure, okay? But I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do, how to spray paint a whole bike and do some custom spray paint work with it and um, how to make it turn out and you'll be happy with it. And spray paint, if you do it and you do it right, okay, uh, it'll last. Mm -hmm. It will last, mm -hmm. all right? It's not going to give you an easy rider or a magazine show shine. Well, I, that's, a, that's wrong. It does. It did. If you want to take enough time and spend the time it takes to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got just a few minutes. I'm going to give about five minutes on this, and we'll get off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've been on almost uh, my producer. They're not paying no attention. Soon be on the subject 45 minutes. But I'm, I'm picking up my producers. They're not a producer. It's just a joke. Just a joke. That's all it is. Uh, you know, because you've been there and seen it. If we're doing a show for, if we're doing a bike, a show bike, okay? Get over there. My she thinks it's time to go OUG. Yeah, I know. I know what she thinks. She's going to bump into the camera. Yeah, I know what she's going to do. That's what she all just the camera did. moves, my dog got to stupid. <laughs> or acting like me or whatever. But anyway, if you're gonna do a show bike, I'm gonna give you some quick, quick things that we have to do and how it has to be done. Uh, I just told you how to put one coat of this paint on your bike, okay? With a show bike, we may put as many as six to seven coats of this on. And I don't mean one right behind the other. We will put one on and then sand it down towards baby butt smooth and put another one on keep sanding back and forth and back and forth we will we will get that primer to where it's just as smooth and yeah boy i saw the camera shake all over right then yeah just as smooth as you want to see it okay mm -hmm. then the next step we start doing our base coats we start doing our paints Corner by the car. we start doing our paints and everything and believe it or not we'll do it the same way okay the same identical way. We will put, we will put uh, our base coats on and sand off. Base coats on. Okay, it may wind up that we have put seven or eight base coats on and sanded them back down. Not all of them, but, and that's again to get a real smooth paint job. Then we're gonna do our airbrush work. Airbrush work goes next. Okay, so we do our airbrush work. Then we do clear coats over top of that. Mm -hmm. Now clear coats can go six to eight, or nine clear coats. And uh, we sand them back off, okay? And we may wind up with three or four coat, clear coats left on top of it, time we're done. But if you go to a bike show and you look at these, bike, these paint jobs and they look wet, you, it looks like you can reach way down inside the paint job. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of depth in, in the paint. Yeah. It's because of all the extra coats of paint that's on there. All the extra coats of clear coats that's on there. All the extra, but all of that has to be put on, sanded down, put on, sanded down, put it on, sanded down. Right. That's the reason some of these custom paint jobs, Purple Haze. Yeah. I think that's a $15,000 paint job yeah. on the bike. Yeah. And that's not including the bike, that's just the paint job. That's the amount of work that goes into these paint jobs if you're going to take it to a show. Yeah. Okay. And if you're looking for yeah. trophy quality, low budget build, we're not looking for trophy quality. We're looking for a nice, inexpensive uh, a nice rider. In, this bike will be, if I sell one, I'm done sixteen to twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It's going to have some custom work done to it. It's going to have some custom, and yeah, you can do custom paint work to an extent using rental cans. Remember to do your lots, okay? When I get ready to paint some of this other stuff, I will buy a case. I may use it all, I may not. If I think I'm gonna do a lot of painting, I'm gonna make, buy two cases and only open one. And then I get done, I got one case left, take my receipt, go back to the store and I get my money back. Mm -hmm. But if you buy two cases, make sure you get it from the same lot. If they don't have it, tell them to order you two cases with the same lot numbers. Believe it or not, these stores will do that for you. Mm -hmm. They really will. Yeah. Um, they know what you're up to, or if it's anybody knows anything, they know what you're up to, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. order it, but make sure, one of the secrets is, look on the back, batch number, lot number are the same, so it's produced on the same day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Denise, you move the camera so she can be in. Yeah, 
I'm sorry about the camera moving. Uh, Lexi bumped it. She's uh, being a butthead today. Well, she wants to go home. You too. Yeah, I know what she wants. But she wants to get some two different things. Yeah. Or something's going on outside that she's okay. aware of or not. Now, anyway. i got to back up and catch up on some things. What? Please like, follow, share, and set your notifications for Nightmares Ride. Now, that being said, real quick, ladies, if I forget anybody, please run it through for me. Bikes, babes uh, across America, bikes, babes, and their toys, um, throttle therapy, bikers living the dream, um, bikes, bikers, and friends bar, Nightmares Ride, Nightmares Custom, no, well, Nightmares Ride, uh, Hot Rods, Hot Rods, Harleys, and Honeys, these are all groups. Go into there. Go into them. Hit like, follow, share, and as Miss Mel will say, set your notifications so that when we're doing these live shows, you'll know it. Now, I've got to stop it, and I'm going to give a special shout out to a few people. Okay. First one, um, Miss Izzy. Miss Izzy runs our YouTube page. Thank you, Miss Izzy. We love you. Hope this shirt works for you, sweetheart. Sorry, it's only the smallest shirt I had. I hope you enjoy it, okay? But I want to thank Miss Izzy. Um, for doing a YouTube page. Now, let me back up. Something I'm very proud of. Some things that's happened this week. What? First of all, you can find Nightmares Ride 8 o'clock Wednesday night right here on social media. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank all of Nightmares Angels, uh, Miss Denise and, and Faith and Mel and Tink for all that. Yes. Okay. Then, MeWe. It's another social media group. That's me. I, I help set that up for all of us. It's all of us, just okay. Then we are also on. Uh oh, going brain dead. Uh, Instagram. Oh, let's see. Instagram. We're on Instagram. Thank you, Miss Tink. And we're also on TikTok. Thanks to Miss Tink. So let's see. I got mail. I got. Never, never mind. Let me back up this way. We're on Facebook, me, we, YouTube. That's what how I got. Facebook, MeWe, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Okay? Yes. So, thanks to the Angels and uh, Angels and Chaining, you can find Nightmares Ride all over the internet. Thank you, lovely ladies. Hit like, share, follow, set your notifications, buy a publication, subscribe. I don't know how all this stuff works. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying. Okay? My head hurts. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. I want to thank uh, everybody uh, that, that got all this stuff going. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Izzy with the YouTube um, and uh, Nightmares Ride to all of us. I mean, but just it wasn't just me. It was me and all the girls, all the angels, and um, as well as um, Tink uh, for the for the TikTok and Instagram and uh, hashtag is something. Hashtag is Nightmares Angels. And by the way, yes, they are Nightmare's Angels. I am Nightmare, and we fashion it after the old Charlie's Angels thing. Uh, long story behind that, I don't have time for it. So let's give a love your page. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate that. Also, you can find me and uh, what I'm doing, Angels, is nothing against you guys. You can find me, Nightmare, and what I'm doing on Nightmare Custom Cycles, okay? Which, uh, Angels, I'm hoping to fold that in to you guys, just an experiment I try to do. It's okay. I, I'm happy with what I did. But it's soon going to be, hopefully this week, part of the Nightmares Ride family, group pages, and all that kind of stuff. Okay? But, uh, yeah, all of them groups have pages, so go to groups or pages for all those. Uh, you'll find us, all the admins in there. And I will tell you, if you're trying to do nudity or uh, things you shouldn't, you know what's allowed on there. Be an adult. Okay? If not, we're going to remove you because we have to choose letting your new picture you're trying to post on there and losing a group or not putting your own there on us keeping a group. That's Suzanne or er, Suzanne Tank reminds us of hashtag Nightmares Rides Radio. Nightmare no it's Nightmares Rider Radio. Hashtag hashtag Nightmares Angels. Yes. Okay, please put yes. that in there. And uh, that's growing. We just passed a hundred on something. I'm sorry I saw it in the feed all ago. Oh my head hurts. Uh, <laughs> Oh, wow, well, more than my head hurts. I'm sorry, my side's killing me. That's really makes so good with my sides. It hurts so bad. But anyway, um, i got to stop and thank some people. Sure. I haven't done it yet. Um, big head graphics. Big head designs. 
OS, OSI, OSI 24-7, Mark Jones, Jones Motorsports. Um, he come on very first one when we moved up here, and I, I, I think and I appreciate all of them, I really do. But this couldn't happen. None of this could happen. Andy couldn't have happened. Uh, and, and we had a company meeting at Andy, and, and the angels know, the angels only want you to know what I'm talking about. Now, you're not even really aware of it. Um, there are some plans for Nightmare's Ride. We are going to move up. We are going to get bigger, better, and stronger. And there's four reasons why. Let me tell you the four reasons. One is Miss Melanie Lee out of Texas. Another one is uh, Miss Faith McKinney out of Illinois, Faith. Oh, yeah. One. Another one is Miss Denise Engelbretson out of Illinois. Another one is Miss Susan Kaiser out of Indiana. These are all four Nightmares Angels. You have seen these beautiful, wonderful women in the feed all night long, answering your questions, being there for you, trying to help out, uh, picking you up out of uh, our shows, uh, uh, what you were saying a moment ago, mm -hmm. and letting us know you're in here. And um, if it wasn't for them four beautiful, lovely women, I uh, mean, you'd be sitting here talking to probably three or four people. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I love you. Hello, John. John Russell's in there. What's up, y'all? Uh, we have 100 posts on Instagram. Cool. I think that's good. I don't know. Uh, uh, yes, we are going to take over the world. We have dominated the United States. Yes. We are taking over, how many countries do you tell me? 13, 18, One, 97? I no, I don't think it's that oh, many. Okay. 97. 1, okay. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, don't forget Jose okay. down there in Chihuahua. I counted And David Mexico. Owen. And, and David Owen in Tijuana. I did not yeah. count the country of David. We have to count the country of David. He has to be counted. Okay. Okay. Don't hurt me. Okay. But how I many? 19? I think it said 14. 14. 14 countries. All 50 states in the United States. I don't I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm taking back by all that. I think it's okay. very impressive. Personally. I think it's very, very impressive. I want to thank Nightmares Angels for all that. We could not do it without them. I love you ladies. I appreciate everything I'll do. And I get to meet great there's Todd and Cindy. Uh, they're from Colorado. Okay. And I, and Todd, you and Cindy both, I really look forward to seeing them in the feeds. What they say means a lot to me. I hope uh, I hope this show brings information that, that they enjoy. If not, let us know. You're not going to make us mad. You're not going to hurt our hurt feelings. Right. This show is for you, the viewers. I'm just a, I'm just going to break down Bike Builder and, and talk about what I love and what I enjoy. And for something special you want done... Or subjects you want to talk about, if you need to go, go. I'm tired. I'm tired of that already. Okay. Um, next time should be chained up out to a tree somewhere. But anyway, uh, if it's a subject you want to talk about or whatever, um, let us know. I will get everything gathered up to where we can do that. Okay. And we'll do a show for you guys. But I enjoy seeing Todd and Cindy and Bradley and Joanne and. Uh, Landon and uh, Martin, I'm, I'm just scanning through names real quick, so if I skip over you, I don't mean mm -hmm. to, and I want to stop that before I do get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Andy, uh, Carrie, and AC, you know, uh, all you guys. I love seeing all of y'all in there, and um, I love what y'all have to say. Please let me and the angels know how we're doing. Uh, we want to know. We want to make it. We are. It's not we want to. We are going to make this show better. We are going to make this show better. All oh, speaking of better, I don't know this for sure, Angels. I just found it. Um, not Fourth of July weekend, but the weekend after that, Nightmare may be in West Virginia, and I may, may take a small part of Nightmare's ride with me. Okay, and what I mean by that, that wasn't meant towards the admins. It's a motorcycle swap meet in Walker, uh, West Virginia, just outside of Parkersburg. Uh, as you know, I have all kind of motorcycle parts. Me and Mark Jones have already talked. We may load up and take my truck and a trailer up there for motorcycle parts. And if we do, I may take tripod and camera and just do a few live feeds from the motorcycle swap meet. Maybe interview a couple people there. Maybe show a few parts there. Don't know. Got a couple things going on over the next couple days. Got to look at the weather. 
availability. They say yeah. I can get in as a vendor, but uh, I haven't talked to them about bringing Nightmares Ride in yet. But if I do, it's not a paying event. It's Nightmares going up with Nightmare Custom Cycles to maybe buy, sell, or trade. Mm -hmm. Sell some of my used stuff, buy some other stuff, or trade for something I don't need. You know? So uh, yeah. as, that, as that comes about, Angels, I will let you guys know, okay? Uh, yeah, we got Joanne, then we'll take somebody on the truck with you. It's either me or the dog. I'm not sure which. Mm. I'm but, better company, but I probably talk a lot more than she does. So. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting down that time of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been talking quite a bit about the spray painting and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Is there anything you'd like to say to before we get out of here? Um, I want to thank everybody for watching us this evening. I really, truly appreciate your spending time with us, and I enjoy reading all your comments and checking in on what people are doing. And, um, we feel very, very blessed to have you as part of our family, and we thank you for that. Um, I missed you for two whole weekends when you were gone. No, you didn't. No, I didn't really. But, I know you didn't. Um, it was well, something I, I really should did. say. Yeah. No, I did. Uh, I really uh, did. Um, uh, uh, uh. I like when you're gone, but I really like it when you come home. That book, here's the truth of it. She likes it when I come home because I'm home 24 hours and I'll start talking about the next road trip, and she likes that even more. I like it when he comes home because when he's gone, nobody takes out the trash or makes the coffee. There you go. See. So, you know. Now they know all of our marital secrets. <laughs> so, I'm the coffee man and the trash man. <laughs> all right? And the couch man. Me and the couch is on first main basis. I slept on that couch. I slept on that couch so long it's time for me to get a new bed to sleep on, which is another couch. In fact, you told me that yesterday. Maybe no, I, I really do miss you when you're gone. I know well, you had a Thank you, Martin. Martin. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not real good with last names. I won't call you Martin. He said you guys are great. No, we think you guys are great. We really we, do. Yes, we Thank you all for the kind of words. Which, what, what you guys don't understand is for me and Miriam, and I can, I can honestly say this for all of Nightmares Angels, we think our viewers are the best. We do. We think you guys are great. Yeah. Uh, we love seeing you all on the feed. I can't wait till Thursday mornings because that's when I turn the show on. I know what we talked about, but then I get to read the feed. Yeah. I get to read what people said. Sometimes I get PMs about the show, private messages about the show. I enjoy that. Well, um, and and our viewers and our fans and the folks who spend time with us are the ones who lead us yes. where they want the show to go, whether yeah. it's tech talk or just having fun or, yeah. or, you know, all of that. And when you do an event like you did last weekend yeah, in Indy, yeah. And especially you spending time with the angels. Oh, that was a blast. Um, I, I, we all get to go with you, yes. whether we're in South Carolina or North Carolina or Dakota or whatever. I, we get to go with you because you do the live feeds. I, you know, I got me and Mark Jones with, uh, we went up there. And I got to watch the live feeds of the angels. That's why he was all starting to converge on the Indians. We were doing a live feed mm -hmm. the day. That was so much fun. And then I get up there, and I have, as you know, I have met or and or done a show with each one of them. Mm -hmm. But I've never been with them, all four of them together at one time. And, yeah, top fuel rails running down, vibrating the building and everything as they took off, and the circle track cars and all that. But the most fun for me was my girls. And I'm not saying my girls possessively, my girls as a family. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they mean the world to me. They yeah. really do. I love them all. Yes, I I appreciate what y'all do more than you possibly can know. Oh, Jonesy says I'm the gutter man. Yeah, I know what that means too, Jonesy. What he means is I got up on the roof and cleaned the gutter out one day. Yes. Yes. I was happy with that too. Yes. But thank y'all very much for watching us this evening. Um, I'm going to go sit in, on the other side of the camera for a minute while Nightmare signs off. And then i got to run this poor puppy dog. All the above. Huh? All the above. Yes. I'm sorry, Andy put something here that says all the above. All the above was a rock band we knew one time, and they wrote a rock song about Nightmare. Yes. Thank you all, everybody. Good night. Y'all stay safe for the next few days, and we'll see you again next Wednesday. Ow. I want to thank Miss Miriam for co-hosting tonight. No. I want to thank all my lovely angels for being in there and working the feed. Thank you all so much. Please go to all the groups and pages. Do like, follow, share, and set your notifications for Nightmares Ride. 
We are on 8 to 10 o'clock every Wednesday night. Tell your friends about us. Have them come by. You see how much fun we have on here. Tonight's been a blast. We've had a lot of fun with the map. I gave some ideas on how to spray, spray paint. And not only works for your bike, but anything you want to spray paint. Okay? All this stuff will kind of work out for you. But until next Wednesday night, uh, this is Nightmare. Nightmare's right. Say, see ya!